All right, <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit more. I'm gonna add it on to what we just talked about, about the business planning and how to grow your business. Obviously, the key to this that I wanted to stress a minute ago was take your business plan and follow it. I want you to, whatever you've decided in your business plan, that's what you should follow. And we talked about, can you change goals? And I said, you should never downgrade your goal. I still agree to that. If your business plan is not correct, insofar as that you picked wrong numbers that were unrealistic, then you should change your business plan. But once your business plan is established, you should follow your business plan. Failure to follow a plan, obviously, what's the old saying? If you fail to plan, you're planning on failing. So what I'm talking about is once you've created that business plan and it dictates certain activities, you must follow that plan so that you can stay on track. Because the worst thing in the world is to get to the end of the year and realize you needed $75,000 to live and you only made 50, okay? Because you didn't follow your plan. Now, there is a chance that maybe some of the numbers were incorrect and that could account for adjustment. That is something above what we talked about. <clears throat> so let's talk about how to increase your business. Well, there are obviously three ways that you can increase your business. The first way is to increase your deal flow. All right. We talked about it in that previous example, you were doing 25 deals a year times $3,000 a deal. That was your 75 grand. Well, I want to raise. How can I do that? One way is to increase your deal flow. And that would in involve you increasing your activity. Say you bump this up to 40 deals a year. Now, you've increased your bottom line because you've increased your activity. That is one potential way to generate more income or grow your business is obviously to increase your deal flow. And that's typically one of the agents, especially newer agents, they believe that's the only way to do that is they put blinders on and they just assume do more business. Well, I will tell you, it's not the only way to grow your business. It is certainly one of the easiest and most directly recognizable, meaning that if I did 10 deals this year or two years ago and last year I did 20, I can recognize that. One of the other things that you can do is you can increase the amount of money per deal. This number. All right, let's go back. If you were doing 25 deals, but you increased your value of your deals to 4,000 instead of 3,000, now you've grew your business by doing the same number of deals, you just increased the price. And that could have been maybe you switched to a different market. You know, you were working in market A and now you are working in market B and the houses in market B are higher priced. Therefore, you're making more money. That is one way to do that. You can increase your amount of money per deal. That is a way, another way to increase or grow your business. The third way is one that is often hard to justify and people don't recognize this if you've allotted eight hours a day to talk to two people, you are spending four hours per person, right? <clears throat> One of the things you could do is lower the amount of time per, per people to then increase. If I can knock that down into half, into two, two hours I spend per person, and now I've got eight hours to do it, I can talk to four people, which in turn increases the deal flow. So what you can do is one of these three ways. You can just straight out increase your number of deal flow. And you, the problem with this one is it typically doubles your time. If you spent 30 hours a week doing 25, now you may spend 60 hours a week doing 40. So while this looks like the obvious answer, 
There are many, many agents that get in their third, fourth, and fifth year that all of a sudden become burnt out because the only way to grow their business, they thought, was to increase their deal flow. And therefore, now they're spending twice as much time at work and not at home. You can increase <clears throat> your price. This seems to be one that people overlook. <clears throat> but here, we're still talking about this 30 hours a week to do the 25 deals. Now, if you've increased the value of your home, you're still doing your 30 hours, but now you're making more money because you've increased this. So this is a very popular way that I would suggest is increase the number of, uh, or increase the value of your homes. That is a hard one to kind of dictate because you're most certainly not going to tell somebody, I'm not going to list your home because it's not a $200,000 home. That could be defined by the market. What I mean by that is play in the Center Grove market, in the Fishers market, in the Westfield. You know, it's kind of hard to increase the deal if you're going into, say, Bogstown. And I'm not picking on Bogstown at all. I'm just saying there is a set of value there in those homes, in that established older home that or city that you may not be able to go. Oh, I'm only going to deal with million dollar homes in Bogstown because there's probably none, maybe one. All right. So this may be a little harder to do, but realize it is probably easier on you as a person because you're not doubling the amount of time. You're just doubling the value. <clears throat> Once again, here's a better way is reducing the time that you spend and still spending the same amount of time, which means you're still doing the same number of deals. But once again, you're increasing your bottom line, all right? So while we have these three listed here, I'm going to tell you probably one of the best ones is this, increase your amount per deal. This allows you to do the same work, make more money. Now, potentially you could do a couple of these. Let's say you increase your deal flow from 25 to 30 and you went from 3,000 to 4,000 you got a double kick here because you've increased your amount of money and you've increased your deal flow. All right. So that's probably one of the better ways to grow your business is to actually use a couple of different of these. If you reduce the time spent, you might be able to do 30 deals in the same time you did 25 deals. So in essence, you used all three of these techniques and increased your bottom line from that 75 to 120. All right. If you have any questions or uh, comments, feel free to email me. I'm at Raymond at Real University. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the summary here. So let's just go on into it. Business is business, right? And it needs to be treated like a business. That means you need to establish goals. You need to establish budgets. You need to realize how often do you check your goals? Should you adjust them? Are you off track to meet your goal? If you are, that could dictate an adjustment. Hey, I'm way off track because my activity was down. You need to follow the plan and adjust your plan, but I'm going to highlight this word right here, adjust it with caution, because you want to adjust it for a valid reason, not necessarily because I'm lazy and I wasn't make, doing my activity, so if I lower my annual requirement to 40 grand, ta-da, I'm right on plan. Yeah, but you had to adjust your plan downward. So you can adjust it, but just do it judiciously and with caution and adjust it for the right reason. So I want you to establish some skills, or some skills. <laughs> we are in the skills section. I want you to establish your business goals. And more importantly, I'm of the mindset that you need to write them down and you need to share them. There are plenty of mindsets where people say, well, I, I don't want to write it down or I don't want to tell other people. And you will get some people that will say, well, if you tell other people, then you may look lose face if you don't meet it. I'm of the mindset that if you tell someone else, 
like a spouse or a business partner who can then constantly maybe, hey, how you doing? How's your last quarter go? Are you up to your goal? They may be able to help you. And the old, uh, what there's a saying that says, a goal that's not written down is a dream, all right? So there was a study done in Harvard years ago and they took some Harvard freshmen who wrote life goals down and then they met back 10 years later and like 90% of the people that written their goals were, had achieved them and the rest had not. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that you write your goals down and you can write them down in Word document. You can use some kind of goals booklet. There's all kinds of stuff. Franklin Planner makes a goals uh, booklet for you to use, but I would suggest you write them down and share them, all right? Now, with that sharing could come the concept that maybe you ask one of your teammates their goal. Hey, what was your goal this year? How are you doing? Is there anything I can do to help you with your goal? And conversely, you're gonna hope they say, is there anything they can do to help you? All right, so make sure that you write your goals down. That's the most important thing and write your business plan. Failure to do that leads to several issues. One, you may just completely forget, you know, heck it was three months ago when I decided that. Now, did I memorialize it on paper or do I remember it was 75 or did I change it to 80? I probably should have written that down. So. Writing it down helps you make sure you're on track. Plus, it also helps you memorialize that goal to make sure you've got it. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. That is lesson number nine. We are now complete and we're uh, about 80% of the way through this course. I thank you all for hanging out and enjoying the course. If you've got any comments, feel free to send them to me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. I'd like to ask you to go out and share a review on Google or subscribe to our YouTube channel or hit a like on Facebook, all right? All of those things kind of help me once again as a lead gen tool. So if you're enjoying this class and you're liking it, please feel free to tell others so that I can benefit and you can benefit as well. All right, hold on. We're not done with the class yet. We got more to do.